begin, as always, with a brief lesson overview. We're going to talk about the two different ways to write numbers. Believe it or not, there are two different ways, and English has some kind of wonky rules on which way to use which time. Then we're going to go over those rules, and we're going to conclude with some practice. See if you can figure out which way to write the numbers in each of the sentences. All right, there are two ways to write numbers in English. Numerals, Arabic numerals, one, two, three, four, five, and spelled out words. Now, you can get into a little bit of trouble writing numerals in the wrong place or writing spelled out words in the wrong place because numerals in the wrong place can seem excessively informal and spelled out words in the wrong place, frankly, can just take you too long. In general, the rule is to spell out single digit whole numbers and to use numerals for numbers greater than nine. So, for example, I can say, I have three brothers. Three is a single digit whole number, so I spell it out. But if you say, the plane crash killed 32 people, it's perfectly okay to use numerals because, frankly, spelling out 32 would slow down the reader quite a bit. All right, now that we've got the general rule out of the way, here's some of the specifics. First and foremost, B consistent. The whole thing about all these rules for writing numbers is you don't want to pull your reader out of whatever you're writing. You want them to keep on reading along and barely even notice whether you're using words or numerals or whatever. You want them to focus on what you're saying, not how you're saying it. And the best way to get them to keep that focus on what you're saying is to be consistent. If your group of numbers has a number greater than nine, use numerals for all of those numbers. If you have numbers in different categories, and we'll talk about that in a minute, use numerals for one category and spell out the other. So, for example, if all 30 history students attend all four plays, then the seven math students will be able to attend only two plays. Now, in this sentence, we have two different categories of things that are being counted. We have students and we have plays. Now, of the various numbers of students that we have to discuss, we have to discuss the 30 history students and the seven math students. Now, you could get away with just spelling out seven because it's seven, but because it's in the same category as history students and there are 30 of them, you use numerals for both of those numbers. Uh, but what, you may ask, what about the plays? Well, we have four plays here and two plays here. So both of those numbers are less than nine. They're single digit whole numbers. So you can spell them out, no problem. And because they're in a different category, from the student numbers, one set of numbers talks about people, one set of numbers talks about things, totally different categories, then you can use a different set of rules. As long as you're consistent, it usually works out. Next example, my 10 dogs fought with their two dogs. Well, in this sentence, we're talking about two groups of dogs, same category, so the fact that we've got 10 dogs there means that we have to use the numeral two for the two dogs. But you can also get away with writing it the other way. My 10 dogs fought with their two dogs. This is a little bit of a gray area. The number is greater than nine, uh, but it really doesn't take up too much extra space to write T-E-N as opposed to writing one zero. So you're not gonna slow down the reader too much. They're probably just gonna read the sentence and go on with their life. So particularly if you're writing a non-technical document, so let's say you're writing a novel, Go ahead and spell out the numbers. It flows better, stops people short a little bit less, especially in fiction, um, and basically no one's going to care. The rule here is, whichever way you go, be consistent. This is also handy because if it turns out later that you've made a horrible mistake in the way you're writing numbers, if you're consistent the whole way through, you can fix the mistake pretty easily just by, well, fixing it consistently. All right, next rule, always spell out simple fractions and use hyphens with them. So, one half of the cookies have been eaten. To pass the bill, you will need a two-thirds majority in the student senate. So we uh, use letters instead of numerals for simple fractions and we hyphenate between the words. Pretty simple. Next, a mixed fraction or mixed number can be expressed in numerals unless it is the first word of a sentence. Now, this is something you want to pay attention to generally. If at all possible, never use numerals as the first word of a sentence. It just freaks people out, and we don't even know why, but people don't like numerals at the front of a sentence. So if you have to use numerals, rewrite the sentence so it's not the first word. Or if, you have to, or if it has to be the first word, spell it out. So we expect a 5.5% wage increase. We can write 5.5 because it's a mixed number. 
so we write it in numerals. But if we put it at the front of the sentence, five and one half percent was the maximum allowable interest. Well, now it's at the front of the sentence. You don't want to put a numeral there if you can avoid it, so you spell it out. Both ways work as long as you're consistent. All right. The simplest way to express numbers is best. Round numbers are usually spelled out. Be consistent within a sentence. So, for example, here's a whole bunch of right ways to do it and wrong ways to do it. It is right to say you can earn from one million to five million dollars. You're talking about two sets of numbers, pretty much refer to the same thing, amounts of money. So you're consistent in you spell them out. You spell both them out. It is wrong to say you can earn from one million to five million dollars. Not only because I left a period off the end of that sentence, but also because five million dollars is in numerals and one million is in words. That is a great way to draw your reader's attention to the fact that you're talking about numbers, rather than draw their attention to what you're actually saying. You want them to pay attention to what you're saying, not how you say you're saying it. So don't disturb their focus. Be consistent. It is right to say you can earn from five hundred to five million dollars. It is also right to say you can earn from dollar five hundred to dollar five million. Both of those would normally be pronounced five hundred dollars and five million dollars, but in this case, I'm saying it the way it's written so you understand the difference. It is, however, wrong to say you can earn from five hundred dollars to dollar five million, or you can earn from five hundred dollars to five million dollars, all spelled out. The problem here is consistency. You can do this mixed. Uh, numeral and word form, especially for large amounts of money, it's very common in things like millions. In fact, it's the most common way to write that. But you have to be consistent within the sentence. So in this case, we have the whole thing in numbers, and then we have a combination numerals and words. Doesn't work. It's inconsistent. It freaks people out. Similarly, if you have all numerals and then all words, it really throws people off. It pulls them out of their reading, and you don't want that. All right. Next, decimals. You knew we were getting to decimals. Write decimals in figures, in numerals. Put a zero in front of a decimal, unless the decimal itself begins with a zero. So the plant grew 0.79 or 79 hundredths of a foot in one year, or the plant grew only 0.07 or seven hundredths of a foot this year. Since this decimal does not start with a zero here, we put a zero in front of the decimal point. This one has a zero after the decimal point, so we don't put a zero in front. And of course, we use numerals because it's decimals. Otherwise, it just gets really complicated trying to spell out thousandths and then pronounce it. Next, with numbers of four digits or more, use a comma to mark off each set of three digits to the left of the ones column. This is something you probably learned in math. But basically, you start at the decimal point and you go one, two, three, comma. One, two, three, comma. One, two, three, comma. Just like you learned in math class, it's the same in writing. It's the same in grammar. For once, something that's the same. All right. When writing out a number of four or more digits in words, do not use a comma. However, do use the word and, where a decimal point appears in numeral format. So, one thousand three hundred sixty-two dollars and ten cents would come out to. There's our dollar sign. One thousand. Three hundred sixty-two dollars point ten cents. So we put an and in place of that decimal point. Now, when you are writing dates, this gets a little bit funky.、Uh, basically, follow this format. The meeting is scheduled for November thirtieth. Now, I just said thirtieth, but it's written November thirty. If you put month and then immediately day, it's just month numeral. That's how it works. But the meeting is scheduled for the thirtieth of November. If the numeral comes first, then you add that little th or rd or st or whatever you need to turn it into a word. We play tricks on April first, but you write it April one because it's month then day. The first of April. Oh, here we have day then month, so we have that little st after the one. The first of April puts some people on edge. It really doesn't matter which way you go as long as you are consistent. If the Uh, numeral day comes first. You get the little suffix on the end. If the numeral day comes after the month, then you just write the numeral. All right. Next, when expressing decades, you may spell them out and lowercase them. So, he was a civil rights activist during the '60s. At least in American parlance, this means the 1960s. 
And you don't need to capitalize the S in 60s. You don't need to use an apostrophe or any funky uh, punctuation. You can just write 60s just like that. We use that for pretty much all our decades if we expect people to know the century. Next, if you wish to express decades using incomplete numerals, put an apostrophe before the numeral, but not before the S. For complete decades, don't use an apostrophe. What do I mean by complete decades? Well, he was a civil rights activist during the apostrophe 60S. You'd still say that, the 60s, but if you're going to use a numeral, you put the apostrophe first, then you put the numerals, and then you just put an S. No apostrophe between the zero and the S. But if you want to use the complete decade, he was a civil rights activist during the 1960s. You notice there's no apostrophe anywhere in that. You just write 1960S and you go on with your sentence. All right, next, time of day. You spell out the time of day in your text, even with the half and quarter hours. Now, if you're talking about, you know, 1237 or something, okay, use numerals. But if you're saying, 3.30 or 5.15 or something like that, then you just spell it all out. And whenever you use the term o'clock, always spell out the number. So I get up every morning at 6.30. Okay, there we spell it out. The music will begin at 8 o'clock sharp. Under those circumstances, you always spell it out. You use numerals with the time of day when exact times are being emphasized, 12.37, or when you're using a.m. or p.m. So Heather's flight lands at 11.30 p.m. Generally, when you're talking about meeting someone as they get off an airplane, you want to be extremely precise about when the plane lands. Uh, similarly, uh, please arrive by 3 o'clock sharp. What's this? I used sharp in two places. Well, it's a little bit of a gray area. Uh, and frankly, music almost never begins at the time it's supposed to begin. Whereas, if someone's just demanding that you show up by 3 o'clock sharp, they probably do have something important in mind. Uh, similarly, I've got a 10 p.m. deadline. If you absolutely have, so have to get something done by 10 p.m., you want to be extremely precise about the time, so you use numerals. Next, use noon and midnight rather than 12 p.m. and 12 a.m. Why do we say noon and midnight instead of 12 p.m. and 12 a.m.? Because otherwise it's just confusing. There are a lot of people who think that 12 p.m. should be midnight because it comes after 11 p.m., even though 12.01 a.m. is one minute after midnight. And Jeff, frankly, to avoid the whole thing, if we're talking about that point where we switch between a.m. and p.m., we just use words instead of numbers and everyone goes home happy. All right. Hyphens. You knew I was coming back to hyphens again. Hyphenate all compound numbers from 21 through 99. So 42 people were injured in the fire. Remember how you don't want to start a sentence with a numeral? Well, this is how you spell it out. 28 of them were hospitalized. Again, you're starting a sentence with a numeral, spell it out, and this is how. Next, write out a number if it begins a sentence. Well, I've told you this several times in this video, haven't I? 29 people waited in line ahead of us, but when we arrived, there were 29 people in line ahead of us. That's because 29 no longer begins the sentence. It's also pretty legitimate to say when we arrived, there were 29 people spelled out in line ahead of us, just because, frankly, as long as you're consistent, nobody really cares. And particularly if you are writing something more informal, it's pretty much okay to spell it out. So main rule here is don't start a sentence with a numeral. Start it with spelled out and hyphenated if necessary. Okay. So now that we've got all these rules in your head, let's do some practice and see if you can figure out uh, where, we sh where, if anywhere, uh, there are errors in these sentences. Some of them have numerals that should be spelled out. Some of them have spelled out numbers that should be numerals. Take a good look, see if you can figure it out. The baby woke us up at 4.27 a.m. Please refund my $534. For just $5 more per month, you can have our deluxe upgrade package. 86% of statistics are made up on the spot. Our company has grown from six employees to 51 employees in six months. If only nine people show up, will you still give your lecture? He scored more goals in 09 than in 08. A two-thirds majority is needed to break the filibuster. And 98 people rode my bus yesterday. Take a good look. Pause the video if you need to. You ready? Here we go. 
All right, the baby woke us up at 4.27 a.m. Generally, if you're complaining about the time an infant screamed you awake, you want to be very precise about the time so everyone else can go, oh, that's a terrible time to wake up. So, because we were so specific, 4.27 a.m., we use numerals. Please refund my $534. For just $5 more per month, you can have our deluxe upgrade package. Notice that it's correct to write it out in numbers to write it out in numerals with a, with a dollar sign, and to write it out with numerals, a dollar sign, and a decimal point. Any of those will actually work, since it's not the first word in the sentence, as long as you're consistent with the rest of whatever you're writing. 86% of statistics are made up on the spot. This was a numeral beginning a sentence, so you have to spell it out. Our company has grown from six employees to 51 employees in six months. The problem here was in the original sentence, you had a combination of spelled out numerals uh, and uh, spelled out numbers and numerals. You had to make it consistent. So in this case, we have three sets of numbers. Uh, and honestly, you can get away with saying 51 employees because it's not too big a number for you to spell out. In general, it's totally fine uh, to write it in numerals or in words, but the key here was consistency. And since we already had two numbers that were spelled out and one that was a numeral, it's simplest to just correct the numeral and make it consistent. If only nine people show up, will you still give your lecture? Here there was only one number in the entire sentence and it was less than 10. It was a whole number, nine or less, in this case just nine. So you correct the numeral to a word and get on with your life. He scored more goals in 09 than in 08. This is actually a perfectly legitimate way to write a partial year, assuming people you can expect people to understand uh, what you're talking about. This is similar to the whole thing about the 60s. Works just fine. Works also with 09, 08, 92, or whatever year you're talking about. Next. A two-thirds majority is needed to break the filibuster. Hyphenated and you spell out simple fractions. And 98 people rode my bus yesterday. That should be spelled out because it's the first word in a sentence. And that's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching. Educator.com.